what the reality TV show The Amazing Race can teach us about being an entrepreneur. So The Amazing Race is a fascinating show because basically the idea is there are a bunch of teams and they engage in a race where they travel around the world and do different challenges in each city and each country so they get a sense of what the local culture is like but they also have some really challenging um, things that they need to go through in order to be able to complete the various stages and get to the end. And the last team in each different phase gets eliminated. So as long as you're able to stay in it long enough, then you can survive, get to the finale, and hopefully win. So it basically comes down to a variety of different skills that are required in order to be successful. <laughs> For me, I'm not a huge risk taker, and even worse, I'm terrified of heights. So some of the things in Amazing Race would be challenges I would really struggle with because I don't know how I'd jump out of a plane or you know jump off a tall building or bungee jump or any of those kinds of things. That said, a lot of the things I find very fascinating, and I love the live look-ins all over the world where you get an intimate idea of what it would be like to be in various cities and various towns in different countries. So I find the show itself fascinating, and I just love it from a travel perspective. But if we look beyond the entertainment value of it, you know, it's obviously a long-running show. I think they're going on to season 37, so it's been very popular. It's one of the few reality shows, there are about a handful of them, that actually survived, something that started off as an experiment, and like Survivor and a few other ones, it seems to have endured because there are things about it that make it universally entertaining and universally interesting. Even though, you know, the challenges and the idea and the setup is essentially the same, they throw in a couple of tweaks, the teams are all different, and the places they go are different. So we really get to learn about various cultures and see what various cities and countries look like, which is fascinating. But if we look beyond that, we can find some important lessons in basically the travel around the world and the contest as well that translate really, really well into the business world. So if we're entrepreneurs, if we're business owners, and we pay attention to what we can take away from what we're watching, there are a bunch of different lessons. But let's talk about 10 in particular that we can apply from The Amazing Race to our businesses and to our lives as entrepreneurs, because I think these are very um, appropriate for what it is to be a parallel between racing on The Amazing Race and trying to run a business as an entrepreneur. The first one is to expect the unexpected. The fact of the matter is, in The Amazing Race, they're constantly ripping a new clue, opening it up, and they don't have any idea what is next in store for them. You know, as viewers, we might see it because the host might give us a live look in at what they're going to be doing, but they don't learn until they rip the clue and open it, and oftentimes it's a cryptic clue. So then they have to decide which team member is going to do the challenge before they officially know what it is. And so it can become a real, a real challenge in terms of deciding who does which of the roadblocks and which of the challenges. Entrepreneurs, much like the Amazing Race contestants, we have to be prepared to face unforeseen challenges and be able to adapt quickly to changing circumstances. Some things in our businesses and our lives are going to be very predictable. There are going to be things that, you know, even changes we may see coming. And other things are going to be things that there's no way we could have ever predicted. You know, you would have been hard pressed to predict the COVID pandemic. And for a lot of businesses, for a lot of entrepreneurs, it drastically affected their business. Now, I know, you know, just from the local restaurant industry here, for some of them, it actually turned out, and this is true of entrepreneurship a lot of times, if we're smart and we're adaptable and we're, we're able to navigate what we need to do, we can actually turn some challenges into positives. And some of the restaurants around here did that. They became very efficient at the takeout business and they actually grew or at least maintained their existing sales levels, even though they were struggling with the idea that you couldn't get people in the dining room, you couldn't serve drinks and all the other high margin items because you, you weren't allowed to have people in, in one space altogether. So the ability to pivot and the ability to find creative solutions 
is crucial in both the show and in business in general. We have to be able to do that. The second parallel or the second lesson we can draw from it is to know your task. You know, the contestants in the show, and we see this in every single season, there's always a team that doesn't read their clue carefully. They're in such a rush because of the time pressure and they want to make sure that they get everything done, that they race through a challenge only to leave something behind, to leave one element out. And it costs them sometimes hours. Sometimes it actually costs them elimination because they took too much time or they had to go all the way back because they forgot something. And that can be a very costly mistake. You know, there's an expression that says there's a very high price for negligence in this world. And that's absolutely true because the fact of the matter is, in that particular case, you can get knocked out of the race. Well, as entrepreneurs, it's exactly the same situation. You know, the stakes couldn't be higher if it's our own business. So we do need to have a clear understanding of our goals and objectives. It's very easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day sort of machinations of what our business is doing and be stuck in operations mode where we're just fulfilling orders or, you know, doing tasks when we have to really understand what it is that we're trying to do in the first place and have that 10,000 foot view to make sure that what we're doing is all aligned with where we're trying to go. And that's a really important lesson for both people in the race and for you know, entrepreneurs. Because if we misinterpret data, if we misinterpret something that we're looking at, or we overlook important details, whether it's in business or the race, that can lead to really costly mistakes and setbacks. And on the race, it might be, oh, you know, we get knocked out and our dream of racing is over, but whatever. But in business, that can really be costly and it can be something that ultimately could potentially knock us out of business. So it's very important to be clear on what it is that we're trying to do and have that, you know, that in the back of our mind as we try to move forward, getting things done. The third lesson or parallel is the importance of effective communication. You know, the amazing race is teams of two. And oftentimes they're, you know, people that know each other pretty well, their best friends, their spouses, their, you know, partners or brothers or sisters or whatever, family members. And so the sort of idea that's built in is that they would be able to communicate well. But the one interesting dynamic is if you haven't been somewhere with somebody else in a pressure situation and with them constantly, the relationship dynamic is very different than it is when you have a casual relationship or you have the ability to escape when needed if things don't go well. You know, you can diffuse the situation, you can leave, you can come back if you have sporadic contact. When you're forced together for weeks at a time and you have to navigate all of these things together, it's a different situation. I remember when I was um, trying to decide about college and you know, I was back in high school my senior year and I had a couple of friends that were going to be going to the college that I was going to. And one of the things that seemed to be a universal truth that everybody always said is, you don't want to room with your friends. You don't want them to be your roommates when you get to college. On the one hand, it seems logical to make that the case because you already know them, your friends. It would make that relationship really great. And it would make the transition to college really easily. However, on the flip side of that, if you haven't lived with that person before, it's a different relationship. And I actually did happen to room with a friend of mine, and I would say it worked out okay, but we definitely had big differences in our lifestyles. And so after two years, we decided mutually to go our separate ways and room with other people. But we did room together for two years, and I can attest to the fact that it is a very different situation. You know, this is a guy that I actually went away with his family on vacation. I was at his house once a week. He was at my house once a week. So we knew each other really well. But living together was still a very different situation. And so that communication is super important on the race. They have to be able to communicate and work together to get things done. And, you know, if, if they're not able to do that, they're going to struggle because some teams are. And that's who they're competing against. In entrepreneurship... It's exactly the same thing. We have to be strong communicators, especially as the CEO or business owner, in every facet. So whether we are leading a team, whether we have a staff, whether we have outsourcers, 
whether we are trying to negotiate with partners or suppliers, whether we're pitching investors, whether we're dealing with our customers and doing customer service, communication skills are vital, especially nowadays where very little is done face-to-face. You know, when you have a face-to-face meeting with somebody, you can convey the way that you feel through body language and other things. So if you are honest and you know, and, and you are authentic in the way you're communicating, people can sense that even if the words you use aren't great or perfect. However, when we're communing, communicating by email or other things like that, tone can often get lost. You know, I, I worked for a company um, in the sort of earlier days of email and we were remote. So email was a really big way that we, we kept in touch. And there was one um, senior vice president that I had to deal with uh, about some hiring issues. And I had sent her off an email and I was um, running out of the office. So I had sort of typed it up quickly. And, and it wasn't meant to be rude or curt or dismissive. But because I wrote it really quickly and we didn't know each other very well, she actually was, was you know, had questioned me about it after and said, oh, you know, I... I you know, I feel as though you were you were trying to you know downplay what I was saying, and I had to I had to call her and straighten it out and say no 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 you know that wasn't my intent. You know I have a lot of respect for you and you know your your ideas and opinions and our relationship, and that was not at all what I intended. But it's very easy to misinterpret things, especially tone when we're dealing with written communication by email because not only is it quick, but we don't usually write you know, thoughtfully and long-windedly because it's email. We're trying to get things done. And so that communication skills are vital in every element of life, but particularly as an entrepreneur, because we have to be able to communicate with all the constituents in our business in order to be successful. The fourth trait or parallel between the amazing race and entrepreneurship is perseverance. This is vital. You know, I do a lot of podcast interviews And I have to say that a lot of the people that I interview that are entrepreneurs, the number one piece of advice that comes up over and over and over again, and there's a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds that have, uh, you know, achieved success through a lot of different means. But I would say if there's one common piece of advice they all give, or the vast majority of them give, it's to never give up. It's to be perseverant. It's to constantly keep going. Because that's ultimately the success. It's not the it's not a, a momentary failure or lack of success with something that knocks you out of the game. It's when you decide to stop trying. And the Amazing Race teaches contestants to never give up because you just never know when another team might be struggling too. So if you get defeated and give up, sometimes you'll find that had you just kept going, you might have survived and instead you get knocked out because you gave up. And so you just never know and you have to keep going. This resilience is equally important for entrepreneurs because we face numerous challenges. I mean, in a lot of cases, our entire jobs and and careers and businesses are basically firefighting. We're putting out one challenge after another, solving one problem after another. So there are always setbacks. And if we view those as opportunities, even though it's a bit cliche, it really is true that a lot of times not only can we find a solution to the problem, but it'll put us on a better track than we were before because we were just sort of on autopilot going. And then we were forced to change course, forced to reevaluate. When we do that, oftentimes we can even come up with a better way to do things than we thought in the first place. And so if we just keep going, that's a big key to success. The fifth lesson in parallel is adaptability. Contestants have to quickly adapt to new environments. I mean, they're going to different countries with different languages, different cultures, you know, different modes of transportation and different ways to navigate. And so there are a lot of challenges that are built in inherently into what they're doing. And entrepreneurs need to be able to be flexible and willing to adjust our strategies in response to market changes and customer feedback also. Um, Just because something we're doing works right now doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow. In fact, we know that the only constant in business and in life is change. It's going to, things are going to keep changing and things are evolving at a faster pace than they ever did before. So that is even, even magnified by the fact that we live in a technologically advanced society nowadays where 
the change is so rapid fire that it's very hard to keep up. And so it's more important not to have a rigid structure. It's more important to have built-in adaptability to what it is we're doing so we know that we can change on a dime when we need to and we can pivot and we can adjust and be successful because that is going to be a vital skill in any business that we're running in any industry nowadays. The sixth parallel or lesson we can draw from Amazing Race for business is the ability to problem solve. You know, the show constantly presents teams with puzzles, challenges that require creative thinking. Some of them are just flat out, you know, just gut through it and it's just exhausting and it's physical labor and it's just until you get enough of it done, you're not done. But some of it requires a little bit of ingenuity. It requires a little bit of creative thinking. There are puzzles that if you do it the long way can take a long time. If you do it the short way or you do it in a way where you, you think up some tricks and some clever ways to, to make it a little bit easier or to gamify it a little bit, then you can get through it a lot faster. And as entrepreneurs, it's really the same thing. I mean, we deal with a lot of challenges all the time. And so we need to be able to problem solve. You know, we need to be able to find innovative solutions to, to complex problems. Some of the problems we deal with are going to be repetitive. And those are things we can develop systems or methods to, to overcome those. Some of them are going to be unique to the time, unique to the situation, unique to the environment, whatever it is. And so we need to be able to think from the perspective of an open mind and figure out, look, let's not take anything off the table here. Let's consider all the different options. Is there a better way to do what we're doing that'll get us to where we want to go even faster, even better, and even more effectively or profitably than what we're currently doing? But being able to problem solve is probably the number one vital skill for an entrepreneur because the vast majority of the time, that's how we're trying to move forward. It's problem solution, problem solution, problem solution. And that's how we sort of navigate the path to success. The seventh parallel that we can draw from the amazing race in business and entrepreneurship is time management. You know, they're always racing against the clock because they have to beat the other contestants. There's very rarely a pure time element. You know, some challenges have that. You have to complete the challenge within a certain amount of time or you have to redo it. But for the most part, it's about racing against the other teams. And so there's an inherent clock that's ticking because you know that other teams are also trying to complete the same challenge and whoever gets their last loses. So as the race goes on, in the beginning, there might be some weaker teams where you could afford to make a little mistakes, you could afford to not be efficient with your time, and you may still survive that. As the show goes on, that margin for error gets slimmer and slimmer because the teams keep getting stronger as the, as the weaker ones get eliminated. So we have to be able to prioritize tasks and manage our time effectively, both in the race, but also for entrepreneurs, because we always have more things to do than can be done. We always have multiple responsibilities and deadlines, and it's about deciding where do we put the majority of our time and what are the things that we choose to do, and equally importantly, what are the things we choose not to do? So we have to not only be really efficient with the time that we have, but we also have to choose the right and most important tasks for the time that we do have and make sure that we get that stuff done in an efficient and effective way. The eighth parallel or lesson is how to leverage strengths. The successful teams in The Amazing Race recognize each of the team members' weaknesses and strengths and play to that whenever possible. So they can't always know exactly what the next challenge is, but if they get a sense of it and they know somebody is really good at it, it makes total logical sense to put them on that challenge because we want to be able to do that so we can get through it faster and easier. As entrepreneurs, we should similarly identify and capitalize on our own strengths. When there are things that we're really good at, we want to lean into those and do those, especially if they're high leverage. If there's things that we're not good at, we want to assign those to team members or we want to find outsourcers who can do those and do it at a cost that's less than it would be for us because they can do it without spending as much time, as much effort, and probably get better results at the same time. The ninth lesson 
from the amazing race that's equally important in entrepreneurship is learning from feedback. Contestants have to analyze their performance after each leg of the race. They have to figure out what mistakes they made, both in communication, teamwork, and the way that they approach the challenges, and they need to make adjustments as they go. For entrepreneurs, we also need to seek and act on feedback so we can continuously improve our products, our services, and our strategies and operations. So it's a holistic idea of where can we improve, and it's there is no finish line. We're always looking to adapt, adjust, and improve on every single thing that we're doing. So by the time we get three years down the road from where we are today, the business that we used to have is unrecognizable because we're so much further along the path to success than where we were before. And the 10th thing is seizing opportunities. The show encourages contestants to take calculated risks and seize opportunities when they arise. It's a really important trait, and a lot of times the winning teams are able to do that very effectively. That same mindset is essential for entrepreneurs. We need to always have our head up so we can look to innovate and grow our businesses. We need to be looking for opportunities, we need to be identifying threats, and we need to be able to capitalize on the things that will help us leverage, grow, and succeed faster and easier than what we originally thought were, was possible. By applying these lessons from The Amazing Race, entrepreneurs can develop the skills and mindset necessary to navigate the challenges of starting and growing a successful business. So the takeaway here is that sometimes the best way to learn is through fun and entertainment. The Amazing Race is a blast to watch and to be able to see sights and customs from all over the world. At the same time, the teams that have to compete and navigate through pressure and challenges demonstrate to us through both their successes and their failures some of the traits and skills that are required to be successful in business too. When we have an open mind and we have a constant learning mentality, we can learn some really amazing things even from the most unlikely or unexpected sources.